an insert EQ. I uh, wonder if I've got it here. There we go. So it's not one of those ones. Um, so basically I can see here, I can roll off the base and then I assign it to here. So if I just go that, that kick drum, at the moment I've got the bass totally rolled off and then just by moving this, I can bring the bass in. So same with the bass line, it's down and then it's in there. So as when you're playing live, so um, and a breakdown, it might just involve pulling, um, pulling the bass and the kit and the and the bass line down. So you can be doing other things, but actually the bass and the bass line is still playing. You can't really hear it, but it's still locking in. And then bring it. And then it, it just adds, it adds back in. Mm. So that's something I've, I've really learned from playing, playing live. Mm. Yeah, keep keep that kick and the bass line going. Pull everything out of it. People can't really hear it, but it's still still going to be be locked in for dancing. In terms of also keeping the rhythm going, how do you actually move from one track to another? Ah, okay, I was waiting <laughs> for this one. I got prepared for this one. It's so this question, is yeah. it's the question I think I get asked yeah. most. I was saying I was going to talk to Simon, and he used the rhythm. Like, That's you, a, yeah. Like, how did you get so this? From is, so this is the interesting <laughs> part. Okay. Yes, is the <laughs> so. Reason is interesting in that it's the only, I think the only software you can load two tracks at the same time. So these are in, totally in, separate files. In theory files. you can do it in Ableton, but I haven't seen it work that well. Re you can do it? Oh, yeah, really? you run multiple instances, but normally the first one crashes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I then, found in personal, well, yeah. Well then I guess theoretically, if it didn't crash, <laughs> you, could do, you could do the same thing, so. I was just saying, my, my experience. Um, does everyone, or the people here know how to DJ? Do you know what beat matching is? What? Beat matching, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, just very quickly, in case you don't, so you've got one track playing at one tempo and you've got another track playing, maybe a different tempo. We need to increase or decrease yep. the tempo of this one so that the beats will, will line up. Okay, so it's beat matching, so that's what you do when you're DJing. So, <laughs> this is actually exactly what I have to do here. It's, it's um, not perfect. Unfortunately, reason tracks don't sync together. I've pleaded and pleaded to the developers, mm. please do this, but they, <coughs> they're they not interested in doing this. I, I don't quite know why. Because so they're let's, no better, I'm sure. Yeah, so for, ex <laughs> for what, I, what I do is, so let's say I'm going to load up this track here, and I, <coughs> I put live behind it because I've got it set up for use in a live set and all that setup means is that when I hit play the kick drum will be down okay it won't be going boom boom and there will be a a hi-hat an offbeat hi-hat so <coughs> that means that um, if I hit play I can instantly hear it and can try and beat match it using the BPMs so um, I'll just load up <coughs> the other part and then we'll We'll try and show you how to do this. Now it's not perfect, it's not beautiful, because <laughs> again, unfortunately, it's a stereo going yeah. out, so I'm actually gonna hit play on the second track while the first one's going, and there's gonna, it's not gonna be, be perfectly in time, uh, yep. unfortunately. Okay, so let's say, here we go, this track here. Um, so we look at the BPM thing down here, so it's gonna be running at 126. <coughs> so that every track I've got set up basically like that. The kick will be out, but there'll be an offbeat hat. Really nice, clear one that I can hear easily. Mm. Um, so if I go to the second track, it should be the same. Again, it's pretty much, again, the kick's down in terms of bass, and it's got that quite sharp offbeat hat. So, first track's playing, blah, 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 I'll show you in a second. First, first track's playing. What I'm gonna do is load up the second track. Here it is here get the BPM the same, okay, 126, and then <laughs> hit play, 
queuing. On time, okay? <laughs> as on time Perfectly as possible. On time, yeah. And of course, with latency, yeah. it's, it's never, never on time. And then very quickly, <laughs> using my well-trained DJ <laughs> ear, I will beat match by increasing <laughs> or decreasing the, the BPM until it sounds right. So you're just nudging it into place. Yeah, yeah, nudging it into place. And of course, you want to do this as quickly as possible because, uh, you know, I hate a train wreck as much as the next man. <laughs> um, I have, yeah, well, let's, we'll let's, have a, let's have a go. Let's have a go. We'll see, we'll see how well. <laughs> okay. Okay, so let's say we've got to the end of the track and this is the end. Um, Okay. Yes. Okay, so here we That's basically it. Now it's going now. So the ticket tray is going now and then then I need to very quickly go back and forth between them. <laughs> muting parts, you know, muting parts of the first track slowly so it's not really noticeable that I'm quickly yep. going between tracks. Flipping back to this one, bringing in something else. So, so is that control of following whatever's active in the, the active project or? No, unfortunately not. <laughs> the, the controller doesn't, but the mutes do. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, you know. Two features propelled. Yeah, possibly, I don't exactly. The, the mutes are good in that as soon as I switch back, mutes on here will affect the mute on that track. Mm. Yeah. Now on this track, but unfortunately the controller knobs don't. So that that is a, a bit of a problem. But again, you just, it's a simple yeah. one workaround, yeah. and you'd, I want the transition to be smooth, but as quick as possible. Yeah. I want to get into playing yeah. the, the new track. So how are uh, when you're on? Does it? it uh, sorry, is, does that kind of make? Makes yeah, sense how that works. Very DJ based yeah. Yeah. But it, it had to be. I mean, for for a couple of years, I was just kind of doing ambient outros of a track. So I'd just be playing this track, and um, you know, you might be just just be be playing that part, and then and then hit play on the next one. Okay, no. Now that's finished, and the new track's playing. But I think what this sort of music art's a very traditional and recognised mm. way of moving between tracks. Mm. It's kind of what you do with vinyl. So mm. I mean, it'd be great if it. It'd be great if it. But it would be great if it was syncable because. Yeah, no, I mean exactly, and it, yeah. but it, honestly, it was stupid when I look back because it took me years to figure out in my head. Oh, I could just. I could just. I could just beat match yeah. them. That's and again. <laughs> I've got a lot better at doing it quickly and again saving tracks using particular sounds and being able to flip mm. back between so it's pretty hectic that the transitions are always pretty <laughs> hectic because I don't want to fuck up you know I want it to sound great on the floor so there's that perfectionist yeah, in here as well like really on. wanting it to <laughs> yeah so uh, back and forth back and forth um, and so I would love it to be syncable and also it would be great because I think it would allow for much longer mm. um, detailed transitions between, between the tracks. And that could be fun in itself, not having to worry about keeping it in time. Um, just, yeah, that you could actually start evolving new tracks, which you can do, of course, in Ableton. You know, mm. Again, because everything's synced, you can actually transition between different parts of different tracks quite nicely. And you, you can't do that here. very geekily impressive, though. <laughs> my my it gives it the credibility. Yeah, I've got, I've got, my, yeah, I've got my geek badge on. That's right. Yeah. Definitely how I visualize it, though. Yeah, it's do it as snap, snappily as possible. I mean, that was a, a, a little, a little slow, but um, one, one, two. two. Uh, so we we're back. We're back. Um, I, I guess it. I guess at this point, um, I just like the. Thank Simon for coming in and, and kind of giving us a bit of an insight into how he does everything. Cool, well, um, thanks for coming as well. That's yeah, I I mean, I, I think it's quite interesting for a lot of people when I was talking that you'd be coming explaining how you're using Reason. For a lot of people, I think Reason was possibly the software that got them into a lot of the production. And it, mm. I, it was a case for me anyway, so mm. it was interesting to see someone who's just kept on using it and, and mm. gone so far into it as well. I, I just love it. You know, I mean, 
purely totally it never stops inspiring me